Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In this sequence of talks, I will discuss the deep and difficult problems that face us in constructing a discipline of Islamic economics and also discuss solutions. This talk is based on the paper Crisis in Islamic Economics Diagnosis and Prescriptions, which was published in the Journal of King Abdullah's University. And in this sequence, in this sequence of talks, I will go through this paper section by section. The goal of this sequence of talks is to understand what happened. Why did the deen, which changed the destiny of mankind and took ignorant and backwards Bedouin to the world leadership and created a civilization which was uh, dazzled the world for a thousand years, how is it that this civilization is now in darkness and ignorance once again? The main thing to understand is that the problem we are facing is a crisis of knowledge. Islam gave us a knowledge which Allah Ta'ala gave to mankind, which had never been given to mankind before. With this knowledge, the Islamic civilization prospered, but Islam came as a stranger and has become a stranger. We have lost this knowledge and that is why we are floundering. And so what is the step to reacquire this knowledge? The central problem facing our ummah is the Islamization of knowledge. Well, how to teach our children? On the one hand, there are madrasas which read them the Quran and the Hadith, but nothing about the modern world. On the other hand, there is the system of the modern education, which teaches them a lot about the modern world, but nothing about deen. So the question is how to, in, how to educate our children in a manner that combines the best of both. Superficially, one could say that let's do it side by side. But this leads to a problem that the Islamic worldview says that the message of God to mankind ended the darkness of the Jahiliyyah 14 centuries ago. And Allah Ta'ala has provided us perfect and complete guidance for all times to come. But the Western education we, teach, uh, we, we learn teaches us a very dramatically different message according to the Western education. Uh, mankind was in darkness and ignorance until 16th century England uh, was received enlightenment and then they made progress and all the knowledge that is useful to mankind was discovered in Europe. So these two are dramatically different understandings of the world history and you can't just put the two of them together and hope for success. So understanding this problem has led to the possible solution of the Islamization of knowledge. So the idea is that uh, Western education is built on foundations which are antithetical to Islam. It praises and glorifies Europe as the most important and uh, valuable source of knowledge. And at the same time, uh, which is actually in conflict with Islamic teachings, at the same time, the Western education contains essential and useful information which we cannot bypass. So the solution to this problem is that we should take the Western education and remove the portions in conflict with Islam and retain what conforms to Islam. So that is called the Islamization of knowledge. In addition to Islamizing Western knowledge, we need to add the Islamic uh, aspects into that education. Based on this understanding, the Organization of Islamic Countries created two universities which were meant for precisely this purpose that on the one hand we will teach western knowledge and the, on the other side we will teach standard islamic curriculum of the madrasa i myself was director general of international institute of islamic economics for 10 years and what i would like to say uh, is that this project even though it is very well intentioned and noble and actually an essential uh, project for us in the Islamic world, this project has been a failure. So the question is why and how can we fix this fake failure and how can we do a correct Islamization? So the goal of this talk is to understand why this failure occurred uh, and uh, the resultant crisis of knowledge that we currently face. And instead of looking at the whole big picture, we will just look at the special case of Islamic economics. Why have we as Islamic economists been unable to present a revolutionary and radical alternative to conventional economics that is currently in use and that is currently the source of major disasters for mankind. 
why can't we create a revolutionary alternative to this? This paper will go through the reasons for this crisis that we currently face and how we can solve this crisis. Uh, some links to related materials which will be referenced briefly in this talk are given on this page.